dear students a warm welcome to e sectiona program so as in the last video we have come across about a brain state in a box and we have come across with simulation of this uh, particular model with a matlab so in this video we are going to discuss about the further topics of this brain state in a box neural network model so let us see about the bsb application so as we have heard about this brain state in a box neural network model it's an auto associative it has a plenty of applications so bsb has been applied to the speech perceptions and the probability learning so which is going to be most useful for the speech perceptions and the probability learning which is going to be a multi stable perceptions cognitive computations as well as a radar signal categorization so these are the applications which are going to be get present under this particular model let me see about a particular application as a clustering application what is a cluster a cluster is nothing but a collection of data points that shares a similar feature values so a cluster which is going to take a particular data values or the data points and which is going to share the similar kind of feature values let me discuss about the clustering application let me discuss about a clustering application as i said a clustering application is nothing but a collection of data points and which are going to do share the similar feature values in the clustering process we wish to associate a particular basin of attractions we are going to do the particular basin of attractions with a cluster of data with a cluster of data let me discuss the radar signal classification application the third classification application as we have been come across over there the first as multi stable perception the second as cognitive computations and the third as radar signal categorizations let me take this third one and we will discuss about that so uh, as the radar signal classification application since the each corner of this n dimensional hypercube as we have come across in the previous video we have come across with this bsb model which is going to have a value of 1 and minus 1 minus 1 and this value which is going to be get create a hypercube this is going to be get interact up to this and it's going to change the path and it's going to reach the next wall and such a way it's going to makes an hypercube over there isn't it as we are already aware about this hypercube which have been created over there such hypercubes we are going to assume and we are going to take that one so this n dimensional hypercube can be made uh, to act as a point attractor in the brain state in a box model network model that naturally uh, that's a natural application uh, in is is one of the main clustering application which is going to be get present over here where each corner of this cube represents a data cluster each corner of this particular thing which is going to form a cluster so that uh, attracted basins of this bsb or a well behaved clusters which is going to be get present over there in a research paper a uh, professor anderson who's going who have applied the bsb model to formulate the cluster radar signals from a different emitters from a different stages of emitters so as a common application of a radar uh, it, it is going to be in a distant detection where one can send out an high power pulse towards a target and when it's going to be reflected from the target a sensitive receiver 
can detect the refracted signal and that detector which is going to compute the distance based on the time which is going to be get uh, delayed to receive back the signal which have been transmitted. So such radar uh, distance detection which is going to be get proposed by this professor Anderson through this BSB model to formulate the cluster radar uh, signal which is going to be uh, emitted from the different emitters. So however, uh, it, it, it may it, if uh, many radars are going to be get operating in a same geographical area simultaneously. Uh, for example, uh, one location we are going to identify that, uh, okay, for example, uh, in one specific area, many radars are going to be get simultaneously receiving the data. A sensitive receiver will detect a multi-attitude of signals, okay, which, which is having a capability to receive a multi-attitude of uh, uh, signals from which we can to deinterleave the individual radar signals from each radar sources. Okay, this is necessary if one has to make a sense of a multitude of signals that is going to impinge on the receiver, such a way which is going to be get present. So that is the main application which is going to be dealt as an BSB application, a clustering application which is going to be determined by the a type of BSB application called as radar signal categorization. Uh, as we discussed about this cluster application, however, if many radars are operating in the same geographical area simultaneously, as already I discussed about that, if you are going to take a place. So um, in the same geographical area, uh, simultaneously uh, many radars are going to get operate, a sensitive uh, receiver will detect a multitude of signals from which we have to uh, deiterate the individual radar signal for each radar sources or from the each radar sources. So this is necessary if one has to make the sense of the multitude of signal that impinge on the particular radar. So the basic idea is to train the brain state into a box network on a set of samples which helps to create the internal cluster, the cluster which is going to make to create so that the BSP network has to be fixed with a set of samples which helps to create the cluster, so the internal cluster. So this allows the test radar signals to be categorized, to be categorized once the system has learnt and assigned a specific corners of the particular signal which is going to be present in the space, a signal space of an hyper box to represent a data cluster. So in this application, the input to the network was a binary vector. Uh, representation bars uh, already we have as we seen about that which is going to be represented in a bar coded radar data. Okay. So the input of this network which is going to be a binary vector representing in a bar code radar data. So the BSP network which has an 480 neurons and the data set which is consisting of an 510 training pulses and 100 test pulses which is going to be generated from 10 simulated transmitters which are going to be get added intrinsic noises also over there. So by having an activation equation as already we have come across about the two different thing, two different functions, one is going to be from the activation function and one more is going to be from the signal function. So from the activation equation parameter as we are going to be already uh, designed or already we have been come across over there as the gamma value, alpha value and the del value. Okay, now. So here I am going to modify bit of this values over there. 
So as what we are going to represent over there is nothing but the alpha value of 0.5 and the gamma value is going to be taken as 0.9 and the del value is going to be taken as 0. So here, clearly in this, uh, what I can say that in the particular application, in the function, we have been considered the alpha value as well as the gamma value is equal to 1. In the activation function, we have considered this as a 1. Here, I am going to modify that value as the parameter of this alpha and gamma are going to be taken in different values as alpha is equal to 0.5 and gamma is equal to 0.9 and maintaining the del value as 0. From this, we are going to calculate the BSB weight matrix. So here the BSB weight matrix learning was implemented with some of the error corrections update rule with the error correction update rule. What is that error correction update rule which is going to be the del value of this particular weight matrix. The delta of weight matrix is equal to we are going to take a function over there. Okay, This function which is going to deal about the x value and the weight matrix of x value with the product of x transpose value. This is going to be taken into consideration. Notice that the weight which is going to be get perturbations goes to 0 when this weight matrix into x is equal to x of k where k is may be taken as 1 to q. So which translates to saying that the patent being to behave as a EGN vectors of the weight matrix. As we have come across about the EGN vectors values in the previous topic. So here which is going to look like, which is going to translate to saying that the patent being to behave as like the EGN vectors of the weight matrix W. So with the unity EGN value, which is going to be behave like a EGN vectors of the weight matrix. So in fact, the signal vector that are going to be associated with the larger EGN value being to be get dominate or which is going to get dominate the activity of this BSB network, brain state in a box neural network. So while noise vectors which are going to be present with a low uh, EGN values which can begin to have a smaller influence in this particular network. So the nice vectors maybe have less value, less EGN values, but that is also going to make an impinge upon this. So a small influence of this nice vector may be included in this BSB neural network. So the BSB neural network was allowed to learn more than 200 iterations, sorry, 200 to 2000 iterations. So the network, the BSB network which may learn to cluster radar pulses which is going to be a data around the hypercube corners in such a way the attractors represented the specific radar signal emitters. As I have said about that one, we are going to take the model. So already as we discussed about this, the hyper cube, the hypercube which is going to be created by that. This hypercube values are going to be taken as I said 150 iterations are going to be there. So here this BSB network is going to be allowed to take over at 2000 iterations. Okay, So as we said 150 iterations initially, we can extend that from 150 to 2000 iterations so that the network which is going to learn the cluster radar pulses data within this hyper cube, within this hyper cube of this particular corners. So in such a way what happened, this attractors which are going to be get represented with a specific radar signal emitters. With all this training informations, the network which is going to form 10 stable attractors in this particular hyper cube. In such a way, the BSB model was able to distinguish the source of the emitter pulses. So such a way this BSB is going to be get 
establishing it's going to be uh, 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 it's going to be trained to do this particular application such a way this clustering application is going to be get formulated in this particular brain state in a box neural network let me see about the next topic that's going to be called as stimulated annealing what is annealing in general the stimulated annealing is a method for solving an unconstrained and bound constrained optimization problem what is this unconstrained and bound constrained it's a method for solving that constraint which is going to be get present over the some of the things have been not at all going to be uh, consisting with a, a specific parameters and some data are going to be get present with a specific parameter which is going to be bounded within a particular value for example as in the bsb we have seen about that we are going to have an egn vectors and the egn values which have been specifically we are given over there which is going to be get bounded sir which is going to be an unconstrained as a 1 to q we have been considered over there this is going to be called as unconstrained parameters and we have taken a1 value and a2 value as 1 to minus 1 and 1 comma 1 as well as the lambda value has been taken as lambda 1 and lambda 2 as 0 0.04 and 0 0.03 so this is going to be called as a bounded value the bounded constraints are going to get present over there so the stimulated uh, sorry uh, simulated annealing is nothing but the method which is going to be get solving the unconstrained and bounded constrained bound constrained optimization problems so this method uh, this method of models which are going to be uh, the physical process of heating a material as we are aware about that which is going to be a process of heating a material and then slowly lowering the temperature to decrease by decreasing the temperature to decrease the defect so thus uh, minimizing the uh, system energy such a way we are going to do that one so as uh, specifically we are going to say that one the model which is going to be a processing of heating a material then slowly lowering the temperature to decrease the defects and thus minimizing the system energy such a way we are going to do that one let me discuss about this particular uh, annealing process in detail A design of high dimensional and complex pattern classifier. What is this high dimensional and complex pattern classifier? So we are consisting of four different things over here. Analytical methods are a techniques, error surface of non-linear systems, and exhaustive search and increasing complexity. So these four are a design of high dimensional and complex pattern classifiers. Let me see one by one in detail. Analytical methods or techniques. A design method we are going to apply an analytical method or it may be a technique to do this high dimensional patterns. When we address the design of high dimensional and complex pattern classifier we find that an analytical method or an even techniques that are uh, an use of local derivatives for the gradient descent turnout of this to be an inadequate over there and we know that the error surfaces of a nonlinear systems is high dimensional spaces have a multiple minima and finding the true global minimum is indeed a difficult task which is going to be get present over here so that for as error surface of this nonlinear system we have to identify the true local uh, global minimums and we have to identify the minima also over there Come to the third one, exhaustive search. The exhaustive search in a solution space to find a good set of parameters which is almost impossible to use due to the sheer number of possibilities that 
arise in the real time or real world problems as we are aware about that one, isn't it? So we can't able to identify a solution to find a, a good set of parameters which is going to be almost impossible as we are aware about that one, isn't it? So uh, which is going to be get used to, uh, we can uh, identify that search, uh, we can try to identify a maximum possible of this particular things. And coming to the next last one, increasing complexity. In addition, an issue that accompanies the increasing complexity of this problem. When I am going to increase the complexity, obviously what happened, your problems also going to be get arises over there. Is that we usually have a less training data or a less prior knowledge? No, we have proper data and proper knowledge and proper training, but even though complexity is going to be increasing when we are going to think into a particular high dimensional designs. Okay, now. So, sophisticated search techniques need to be adopted in order to find an acceptable solutions. So that in this topic, we are going to discuss a, a stochastic search method which is going to be called as a simulated annealing that provide a one possible approach to solve the problems of this high definition or high dimensionals and complex pattern classifiers. To overcome this problems, we are going to approach the annealing process, simulated annealing process. Let me get into this simulated annealing. Before entering into this simulated annealing, just I want to give a glimpse about annealing, the process of annealing. What does mean by annealing? Annealing is nothing but it allows the system of magnets or atoms in alloys to search a low energy configurations. It involves in heating the solid in question to high temperatures whereby random configurations are going to be get explored. So this is followed by a gradually we are going to reducing the temperature towards zero. This is going to be followed gradually reducing the temperature towards zero. And this allows us the system to be get relaxed into a low energy configuration because even at a moderate temperature uh, the system favors regions in configuration space that have a lower energy. So that we have to allow the system to relax into a lower energy configurations, then it has to be get allowed over there to do that one. So these regions are thus are more likely to contain the global minimum. It has to be allowed contained with the global minimum data. So that consequently what happened as the temperature are lower the system has a high probability of this searching so that the optimal configuration can be get possible. This is nothing but the process of annealing. This is going to be called as the process of annealing. Hope that you people may understand about this process of annealing. One second I will repeat. Annealing is a process which is going to allow, okay, as I said, which is going to allow a system to, uh, a system uh, of a magnet or an atom which is going to be having an alloy is also going to be to search to a lower energy configurations and it allows involving the uh, involves the heating of this solid in equations to high temperature okay whereas a random configurations are going to be get exploited and which can be get followed by reducing the temperature towards a zero and allows the system to be relaxed into a lower energy configurations and to contain the global minimum data and which is going to be have an high probability of searching when it's uh, the system is going to be relaxed to a lower configuration by even at a moderately high temperature. Okay, Such a thing is going to be called as a 
handling process. Let me enter into our topic as per the syllabus simulated annealing neuron network. A simulated annealing, shortly we can call it as SA, which is a probabilistic technique for approximating the global optima of a given function. Whichever the function we are going to take that one, that function is going to be get optimized with a global parameters. As already I said that we are going to have a global minimum value so that we are going to make the global optimization of a given function. Specifically it is nothing but materialistic to an approximate global optimization which is going to be in a large space or large search space for an optimizing problem. Okay, So optimization problem is going to be taken into the consideration of this one that is the simulated annealing. So once we are going to enter into the simulated annealing which is going to provide a general framework for the optimization of the behavior of complex stems. It operated by introducing a noise in a controllable fashion into the particular operational dynamics of this system. We are going to allow a noise to be entered into this and that is going to be controlled or which is going to be sent in a controllable fashion into this operational dynamics of this particular system for a robust iterative search for a robust iterative search. So that what happened in the treatment a specific combinational neuron state or as a configuration of the network is going to be get treated. So a different configuration of this network when each uh, each being uh, enter nothing but a particular instant of a signal vector area are going to be get induxed by the value as called as a gamma. So clearly it is going to state that in a n node network there are at most 2 to the power of n configurations are going to be get present. 2 to the power of n configurations are going to be get present over there. That is going to be dealt in this system uh, the, uh, the simulated annealing. Coming to the next, what is the basic idea underlying in the simulated annealing? <coughs> the basic idea underlying the simulated annealing is to generate a different configurations of the system at a various places of a control parameter which is going to be called as a temperature, which is going to be called as a temperature. So as already we are aware about that, the temperature is going to be a main parameter for this annealing. So to gradually reduce the value of this parameter to search for an optimal or a ground state solution to this problem. So we are going to take this ground state solution to this problem over there. So the simplest way to generate the multiple configurations of a system at energy E at a temperature T is to use the metropolis algorithm. Let me see about the. <coughs> so as we have come across over there the important results for the statistical mechanics. What is this statistical mechanics? In general the low energy configurations will be very few as we know that there will be precisely the values which are going to get shown over there that those corresponding to this vectors that are encoded into the network and some other spurious memories are going to be get present over there. We are going to take there are far more a, a possible configurations that corresponds to a higher energies. So in fact the number of possible configurations increases exponentially with the increase in energy. For a statistical mechanism, a system is in the thermal equilibrium when a configuration G with the energy so that Eg occurs with the probability. As we are aware about that, we know that the system is going to be thermally equilibrium when a configuration G, we are going to take a value as G with the energy so that the energy becomes E suffix G occurs with this probability so that P 
P of gamma. So, or else we can take this as a gamma value over here. G may be taken as gamma. Simple. Okay, it's nothing but a constant. That's it. We can change the. It's a variable. Sorry, it's a variable. So we can change that one. So I have taken as P of gamma is equal to e to the power of minus e y by t, and summation of e to the power of minus y dash by t. So which is going to provide. A two partitions over there. One is nothing but Boltzmann's probability distribution, which is going to be taken as p of gamma, and which is going to consisting of a partition function along with this z of t, where the possible configurations are going to be indexed by this gamma value. So, the p of y, sorry, the p of gamma, is referred to as the Boltzmann probability distribution. And z of t is called as a partition function, which plays the role of normalizing the constant. So the numerator of this above equation, which is going to be called as a Boltzmann factor, and for a physical system, there is a Boltzmann constant will be present over there. That is nothing but the value we can take as kb. That may be the value of 1.38 into 10 to the power of 23 joules per kelvin 23 minus so to the power of 10 to the power of minus 23 joules per kelvin that converts the temperature to an energy in this exp expression which is going to be present over there so in this present treatment we can safely ignore this constants by assuming that there will be working with the scaled temperature in our simulations. So then T can be represented as a temperature which includes in the Boltzmann constant. That's why Boltzmann constant function we can we are going to take it into this T consideration is going to be considered over there. So that the underlying procedure which is going to be get present with a technique. So our discussion on the simulated annealing will be in the context of a neural network. So although it is going to be worth pointing out that it is an optimization technique that can be applied to a wide variety of real world problems. At present, we return to the classic quadratic equation which have been optimizing the problem. To remain on the familiar ground, we will consider an hub field network as already we have come across over in the hub field network architecture with a set of given connections for this matrix W matrix as W i j isn't it. So with a given set of values and a bipolar signal functions which is going to be taken the bipolar signal state as S j to the power of gamma we have taken that one which is going to be a subset of which is going to be a subset of 1 comma minus 1 1 comma minus 1 and here this may be taken as i comma sorry minus i comma i also we can consider whereas we are going to mention this value as uh, i may be greater than or equal to 1 as well as greater, less than or equal to n. So this may be the value which have been given over there for this bipolar signal. Then we are going to require to find the value of this particular minimum with the help of Lyapunova energy. So the Lyapunova energy function which is going to deal the value as like that of energy E is equal to minus 1 by 2 summation of i is equal to 1 to n or j is equal to 1 to n which is going to conclude with the signal value of this particular matrix of w into signal function s i to the power of gamma into x s j to the power of gamma okay where we can make this value as w of i comma j is equal to w j comma y because we are going to make it as a symmetric one if you're going to assume as zero obviously what happened it's going to assume as zero i can show this 
and half network showing a few connections for this neural network too. Note that the energy that has been specifically indexed by the configuration gamma. Each configuration will have its own energy that depends on the signal states as we are already aware about that one. So, the occasional acceptance of this higher energy state allows the algorithm to escape from one local minima and explore other potentials into the solution space. So, to implement this, the state transitions from a lower energy into an higher energy is going to be taken care of. So, the occasional acceptance of this higher energy state allows the algorithm to escape from the local minima and explore the potential regions in the solution space. So that the lower energy state to higher energy state, we simply have to compare this value. We can make that e to the power of minus del e by t e to the power of minus del e by t with a random number which is going to be generated between 0 and 1 which value is going to be get generated between the value 0 to 1. If the number generated is going to be less than that of this value then accept the transition else reject the transition. Okay, this transition has to be get accepted if it is going to be less than the number what we have generated over there. If it is going to be greater then we have to reject the transition. Such a way it is going to show the neural sorry hope field network with the connections of the neuron. Coming to this procedure which is going to be present for this particular simulated annealing. The simulated annealing method for finding a optimal configuration of neuron states with a given set of weights which is going to be based on the physical annealing metaphor. So, to find a optimal configuration of a neuron state, we are going to assign a set of values, set of weights based on the physical annealing metaphor, we are going to do that one. So, the procedure is going to be present over there, we are going to see the procedure how it is going to be made over there, which involves the following basic steps over here. Let me see the steps one by one. First step, randomize the neuron state once in the beginning and initialize the temperature to the high value. First, we have to randomize the neuron state in the beginning itself. Okay. Then we have to select or initialize the temperature value. We have to initialize the temperature value to be a higher one, the value to be a higher one. High value temperature has to be get initialized, the first step. Coming to the second step, we need to choose a neuron i randomly from this network okay whichever the network we are going to use over there from that network we have to choose an i value randomly that is the second step and then we have to compute the energy of this particular Lyapunova energy function for from the present configuration which have been identified as a so that the energy becomes E suffix A. Understand? So, next we have to flip the state. We have to flip the state of neuron I to a new state or new configuration called as B. We have to generate a new configuration as B. And later we have to compute the energy for that particular data. We have to configure the energy, we have to compute the energy for that particular configuration. Once that is going to be get computed, next we have to compare if 
the energy which have been created in the second configuration and the first configuration to be get compared over there. If the energy created recently is going to be lesser than that of the previous, accept the configuration which have been created newly. We have to accept the configuration which have been created newly. Okay, So that this change of neuron i, the state of change of neuron i has to be get accepted or else if the condition fails, if this EB is equal to greater than that of EA, then what to be done? Sorry. If EB is equal to, sorry, EB is going to be greater than EA, the newly generated configuration is going to be having a higher state of neuron when compared with the previous state of neuron, then what we have to do otherwise? This has to be accept that the state change for neuron i with a probability. We have to identify the probability which is going to be taken into consideration of e to the power of minus energy with the temperature. Where we have to identify that the value the del excuse me, the del E value may be, the del E value may be newly arrived or newly generated value is going to be subtracted. Okay, it has to be get subtracted. Then we can make the del E value. So, continuing this selection and testing this neuron randomly what happen and setting their state values uh, several times we can set this values over there in this way until a thermal equilibrium is going to be reached we have to do this one okay so continuously we have to select and test the neuron randomly and set their neuron state values several times in such a way we have to compare we have to check this value of newly configured value is going to be lesser than that of EA, accept a new configuration. If not, if it is going to be greater than that of that, we have to go for a del E value has to be get calculated by subtracting the previous value of energy from the newly generated value, then we have to adopt it. And we have to do the particular process several times to attain until the thermal equilibrium is going to be get reached. Okay, once the thermal equilibrium is going to be reached over there, we can stabilize the data and finally what we are going to do, we are going to lower the temperature. We are going to lower the temperature and for further process, we need to repeat the procedure. So, this procedure is going to be continue until the temperature reaches a very small value, very small value. So, this is going to be called as a procedure for simulated annealing process. So, it has to be taken into consideration. Okay, 8 steps we have to follow over there. So, once again I am going to repeat this 8 steps. The first step is nothing but we have to select, we have to make the randomized neuron state at the beginning with the temperature as high value. Then second one, we have to choose a random I value from the network. Then third, we have to compute the energy level of this present configuration. And we have to flip the state of neuron I to a newly generated configuration B. And we have to compute the energy of this newly configured data with the particular energy Lyapunova function. And we need to compare. Next, we have need to compare the process. Once the process is going to be lesser than that of this previous data, accept the configuration. If not, compute the del E value. Compute the del E value based on the difference between this. Difference between this energy level, newly created energy, generated energy with the previous energy value that has to be get calculated and repeat the process and how long it has to be get repeated over there until it reaches the
thermally equilibrium until thermally equilibrium state has to achieve until that select and test the random neurons and set their state for the several times in the way until it's going to reach the thermally equilibrium state then finally lower the temperature and repeat the procedure until the temperature reaches a very small value this is a procedure for this simulated annealing let me see the next one transition probability transition probability note that the algorithm works because at high very very high temperature since the value we are going to take that one e to the power of del e by t is approximately equal to 1 approximately equal to 1 and the parameter Boltzmann constant we have taken that the Boltzmann constant data which is going to be dealt as half of 1 because configuration already we have did 2 to the power of n configurations are going to be there 1 by 2 to the power of n value we are going to make that as a Boltzmann constants so now what is the really means it at a high temperature of all configurations are somewhat equally likely to be present also a high temperature transition to a energy unfavorable states are going to be frequent over here however at a lower temperature transitions to a energy unfavorable states becomes less frequent and the search becomes more like the usual decent procedures so finally if the cooling is going to be sufficiently slow the network has a very high probability of finding itself in an optimal configuration which is going to be get represents a minimum energy configuration uh, from this an implementation point of view we can note that the transition probability is going to be depends on the value of del e difference in the energy level so therefore only those neurons need to be considered which are directly connected to the neuron of i under consideration which we are going to randomly select so the change in this energy the change in this energy del e which occurs when neurons i is going to get flips in the states from the state of s minus i to state of s i then it's going to get transient from or we can take that it's going to be get change from s i to minus s i such a way it's going to be get when flips that when neurons are going to get flips this changes are going to be get observed the change in the energy which is going to be occur when the state when the neuron i flips from state s i to minus s i then the equation the energy equation which is going to be get identified del e to the power of i is equal to we can get this minimized data as 2 into s i x i here we have used the expression for the energy compression term which is going to be released to a neuron i only okay so note that although we have discussed the simulated annealing optimization algorithm in the context of the half field network it is a general technique it's a general technique that can be used to optimize any nonlinear cost functions so we have used the weight matrix or weight symmetric conditions which is going to be considered as w i j is equal to w j i so as already we have come across over there the weight 
symmetric weight matrix is going to be symmetric condition is going to be get absorbed over there so we are going to get the value of the change in energy is equal to 2 into xi into si coming to the next one stochastic simulation the stochastic simulated annealing algorithm which is going to be dealt in the half fill network let me discuss about this so as already we are aware about that we are going to set a binary vectors to be encoded into the half filled cam using a bipolar encoding and we are going to make an encoding process of this w matrix as already we have taken a value over there as x of k into x transpose which is going to be subtracted by the the new value the new identified neuron value i randomly selected value i and we are going to initialize this values has the temperature iteration or iteration limits or it can be an uh, signal vector or it can be an temperature contra uh, contractions are going to be get identified over there with the help of this we are going to have the iteration selecting a neuron i randomly with the help of this value we are going to be already we have discussed about this one so del e value already we have been simulated as 2 into si into xi value that is going to be dealt over there that is going to be taken into consideration and we are going to have this and we are going to have this until all the nodes are going to be polled several times we have to repeat that so that finally we are going to reduce the temperature to the lowering to the level that is going to be an iteration which is going to be given over there until this process is going to be get repeated this is going to be called this is going to be the stochastic simulated annealing algorithm so with this i am going to wind up this video we will continue in the next video thank you